Welcome everybody tonight to our city council meeting. Invocation to be given by Pastor Alex Brumley, the Refinery Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to come gather as a community, Lord, and just steward uh, the community that you've given us well. So, God, I just pray over these uh, next few minutes for our, our time together, Lord, for our elected officials, Lord. Uh, and, God, we just ask for your grace and your humility, God, as we uh, communicate and dialogue and let everything that we do, Jesus, bring glory to you and good to this town of Kingsburg. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alex. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Abby, would you please take roll call? Present. Here. 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 Okay, thank you. Next, prove the agenda. Action by the council to approve the agenda or to make modifications. Items that can be added to the agenda is constrained by state law. Can I get a motion to approve? Make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Presentations tonight we have none. Next is public comment. This is time for any citizen to come forward and address the city council on any issue within its jurisdiction that is not listed on the agenda. A maximum of five minutes is allowed for each speaker. Anyone here like to address council on public comment tonight? Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Next, we have consent calendar. Items considered routine in nature are to be placed on consent calendar. They will be considered as one item and voted upon in one vote unless individual consideration is requested. Each vote in favor of the consent calendar is considered and recorded as a separate affirmative vote in favor of each action listed. Approval, <clears throat> approval of the consent calendar items include recitals reading ordinances by titles only and adoption or recommended actions contained in staff reports. Tonight we have 5.1 and 5.2. Any councilmen would like to uh, pull consent calendar items? No. Anybody from the public like to pull consent calendar items? Okay. Then can I please get a motion to approve consent calendar? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next, we have regular calendar, 6.1. Program year 2024-25, Community Development Block Grant Project Update. Staff report by City Engineer Dave Peters. Presentation by Dave Peters. Good evening, Mayor, members of Council. So this is an update on the CDBG program that we discussed at the last meeting. If, as you remember, we had a, uh, identified uh, rehab or replacement of the Memorial Park restrooms is a potential CDBG project. Council had some concerns on the schedule um, and had directed staff to look at it, trying to accelerate the schedule. We had um, discussions with the county staff and even if we were willing to take some, take an at-risk approach and do some of the work in advance of getting the agreement, we would really only be able to speed up the, uh, the construction by about six months. So based on um, Based on that fact and the urgency to complete the, the restrooms in a, in a more timely manner than what the CDBG funding would allow, we notified the county um, that we were going to that we're going to defer our our funding for this year to future years, and we did not sub submit out a, um, a an application for for CDBG. And just on another note, we we actually submitted a CDBG application in 2001, and just today, so two years later was notified that we can we expect to get a contract on that in October. So the one year could it, it could even be longer. So 
Um, <clears throat> so I did include in the staff report um, the accelerated timelines. If we were to do it um, with alternate funding, that would not have a, an impact on, a, on the schedule. And um, staff intends to bring the item to the finance committee at a future meeting to discuss funding alternatives and then ultimately bring it back to the council with a plan to move forward with the project. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Do we have any public comment on this agenda item? Nope. No more questions from council on this agenda item? No? Okay. Thank you, Dave. Next, 6.2, Gross Management System Ordinance Update. Staff report by City Manager Alex Henderson Presentation by Alex Henderson. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of council. Uh, chapter 16.09, uh, Title 16 of the Kingsburg Municipal Code uh, implements the growth management amendment uh, to the city charter, which was passed by the voters of Kingsburg in the election of uh, November 2nd, 2004. Uh, it established a growth management system uh, to limit the rate of residential growth in the city to a level compatible with the size, financial limitations, resource constraints, and service capabilities of the city and the service providers within the city. Uh, in 2022, the City Council and Planning Commission held a joint meeting to review uh, Chapter 16.09. At the meeting, staff provided a report updating the City Council and the Planning Commission on the growth management system and identifying issues that had arisen regarding the interpretation of various provisions uh, as they relate to the issuance of allocations, time periods within uh, which developers must obtain land use entitlements and construct offsite improvements before allocations expire, issuance of unused allocations and other related issues. At the conclusion of that joint meeting, uh, both the City Council and Planning Commission directed staff to revise Chapter 1609. Uh, we have done so uh, and included the following issues uh, for your consideration this evening. Uh, specifying uh, a time frame, a specific time frame uh, for which developers are required uh, to get their final entitlements, uh, which includes uh, the, identif the identification of what that final entitlement will be. Um, uh, that will be set by staff, uh, which then would start a two-year process for constructing improvements. Uh, if there was uh, no annexation required, uh, it would be a 12-month process. If there was annexation required, it would be a 24-month process. Uh, language that clarifies that applications will only be considered during uh, the designated time. So uh, again, uh, we take applications uh, starting at the uh, that are due by the end of September of each year, which then uh, you're asking for allocations for the future year. So uh, in a couple of, or uh, at the end of September of 2023, uh, we will be accepting, uh, that will be the deadline for ap applications for allocations for 2024. Um, previously, it was uh, ambiguous as to whether or not if there were unused allocations, if you could submit an application in June or July or August, and then we would process at that point. So this would clarify that. Um, if there are uh, unissued allocations uh, after the uh, initial round, uh, the City Council may but is not required to conduct an additional allocation uh, application period at the first part of the following year. Um, there currently are no changes to the uh, Council's ability to allow for three, uh, what we call a three-year rolling option. So if there are unused application or allocations, Council has the ability to essentially award those to an applicant that comes in um, with, a, with a higher amount than the annual amount that's allowed. Uh, there is new language that indicates that if an applicant re requires a modification of the original allocation amount, uh, meaning higher only, that they must receive approval from the City Council. So for example, if someone asked for 80 allocations and was granted that and then later came, wanted to uh, add a lot, make that 81, uh, that would require uh, council approval. Uh, the application process itself requires the submittal of a tentative track map. So uh, currently um, an applicant can ask for allocations, but uh, it's been a bit ambiguous as to whether or not um, they had to actually uh, put forth a project, which makes that confusing for uh, somewhat for staff and for the planning commission as well. So if someone comes in and says, well, I've got, um, you know, I, I've got this piece of land, um, there's 120 allocations available over these couple of years, I'd like to ask for all of them. 
uh, within the intent, you know, later to sort of reduce that and more uh, refine their map. Uh, that makes it difficult uh, for us to um, judge what that project will look like. It also makes it difficult for the planning commission to, and ultimately the council to determine what that project might look like. And we've run into that in the past. So this uh, provides some specific language that would require the submittal of a tentative track map. Um, so attached are two forms of an ordinance amending 16.09 uh, of the Kingsburg Municipal Code. Uh, one is a redline ver uh, version, which highlights those amendments. And the other is a, a clean version. Um, applications for allocations must be filed with the City Planning and Development Department on or before 4 p.m. on September 30th of 2023. If the ordinance is introduced uh, this evening and adopted at the our next meeting on August 16th, the ordinance would become effective on September 15th, 2023, uh, meaning it would be in place uh, when any applications are received. So our uh, recommended action this evening is to introduce the ordinance and waive the first reading of the ordinance and pass the ordinance to a second reading and adoption at the City Council meeting on August 16th, 2023. And that concludes my report, but I'm certainly happy to answer any questions that the Council may have. Questions from Council? <coughs> I had one. Alex, can you real fast, just for clarity, on the three-year rollover, if if there's no allocations granted in the first year, those would roll over to the second year, correct? So the way that it's written now, the council has the discretion to issue those allocations if they want, right? So, so, okay. so in that scenario, yes. So we didn't have any, correct, no allocations given in 2023. So uh, there were none given. And then someone comes in at this time frame and asks for, so each year there's 80 single family allocations and 35 multifamily every year, so 115 total. But if a developer came in, single family developer came in and said, well, you didn't use any last year, I'm going to ask for 160. So I'm asking for the use from 2023 and the total allotment for 2024. The council would have the ability to grant that full amount as opposed to just the one year version. But it is in your discretion, so you could say, you know, we don't want to do that, too. Fair enough. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'd like to hear if there's any public comment before we go. Yes. Do we have any public comment on this agenda item? Members <laughs> of the council, mayor, probably know me. Hey, Craig Club. <laughs> Um, your ordinance, uh, I've, I was here when they put it together, actually, and um, it certainly serves its purpose, and it's done well, I think, for the city. Uh, it might have been a few hiccups during the downturn, like, okay, now what do we do when nobody's building? But I think staff uh, in the past handled that very well, and the council did it at the same time. Um, Alex did a great job of explaining it. It's not the simplest thing in the world. It's kind of a little bit convoluted, um, but it uh, once you once you go through it a few times and once you live it, you know Sandra kind of knows it very well. So if you got any questions, you can ask her. I just want to clarify a few things. Uh, we call it Phase Five at Kings Estate. It's on the west side of Mendocino. It's the Jackson piece. Um, you probably saw it's been cleared lately. And, we're just kind of starting to prep. Uh, we submitted for allocations last June on that piece of property. We were granted allocations. Uh, we appreciate that. And we also have the chance now to the property to the north of us. It's called the Quait property. It's about 14 acres, not a real big piece. Kind of an odd piece. It's real long and skinny. And it doesn't really work for just anybody. I know... Um, Bonadelli, they came in here and they were looking at it, and uh, it was, it's a tough piece. So anyways, we can make it work with our Phase 5 pretty well, create some larger lots, and actually when we redesign this, and this is why I kind of wanted to bring this up tonight. It's great timing, actually. When we re redesign Phase 5, the Jackson piece, we don't really redesign it, but we lose a few lots. And I wanted to clarify, if we lose some lots, that's okay, right? We don't have to go back for council for allocations because we're actually going down. Correct. Okay, makes sense. The Quake property was also given allocations. I think it's at the same meeting. 
I think we were that. Was it the same meeting? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So um, my understanding, of course, the seller's telling me this, and I believe it, that those allocations go with that property. The map that they put on that has changed very little, and I think we've, we've just put it together so you guys haven't had a chance to really look at it. Sorry about that, Dave, but it's a neat map. I think everybody will like it. Um, but my question, I guess, would be, do those allocations go with that property, the Quake property, or are we going to have to resubmit and, and go through the process? And I can, while they're talking about it, I can, t <laughs> I can tell you, it's not going to happen tomorrow, right? All this takes a lot of time. And, you know, we still have a fourth phase to go, and then we're coming across the street. But we like to be way ahead of it because good old PG&E, they won't look at uh, a plan until it's been submitted. Mr. Peters has looked at it. They just, they used to, but not anymore. So that just adds a bunch of time to getting power, and uh, that can be very stressful, not only for us, but our homeowners. Just puts everybody in a bad spot. So we like to start ahead of time, get everything we can done. Sometimes I think Dave's going, what are you guys doing? You know, but it's better to start ahead of time than, you know, be, be way down the line. So anyways, that's what so we're doing. Real quick, to answer your question about the allocations going, would you be okay if we direct staff to maybe do a little bit of research? This seems like it's a little bit complicated with it not being property that's yours, the allocations before. Would you be okay if they don't give you that answer tonight and if we direct staff to get back to you? No, yeah, that's, that's, that's fine. Yeah. I just, I don't want to see them scramble for this. Thank yeah, you. no, 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 no. It's fine because we, we've read through it and we're, it was amended in 2013, I believe. And it talked about keeping those, but then, you know, it gets convoluted because of the maps and, sure. and all that. So um, I just, we saw this come up and thought, what a great time to, yeah. to, to go after this. And hopefully you'll see some maps coming up fairly soon. And uh, that's always exciting times. And then we've got to annex. So there's a lot, sure. lot to do out there. And it's less lots. That one's less lots than. Um, what was allocated is less lots. Yeah. yeah. Less. So less allocations would be used than right. the original function. Okay. Yeah, if, we, if, you're, if you're good with that, we'll probably just have staff get back to you on that. That's good. That's fair enough. Any other questions? What you got? Any questions for Dave? No? Okay. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Any other public comment on this agenda item? Nope. Any more council discussion? Uh, you know, I have some questions. Uh, I do want to have more discussion uh, s specifically about the three year rolling options. You know, as I've kind of recently started to unpack this, I, I do have further questions for it. I just don't want it to really get congested with what this ordinance changes are. Because it seems like most of this ordinance change is more of a procedural cleanup thing for staff. So I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, like convolute that too much. So. If it's possible, I would like to maybe bring an item back, maybe sometime in October, like mid-October, to talk about that three-year rolling option. Because um, I'm supportive of it, of it as it stands, and just moving moving forward with it as it's written. Um, but I do want to have further discussion about that three-year option, just at a later date, if that's possible. That's that's all I really have on that. Staff got to know that. Alex, thank you. Any other comments or discussion? Okay. An action by council is waive the first reading and introduce ordinance number 2023-001, an ordinance of the city of Kingsburg amended amending chapter 16.09 of Title VI of the Kingsburg Municipal Code regarding the growth management system and pass the ordinance to a second reading and adoption at the city council meeting on October 16, 2023, with the following recital constituting reading and title of the ordinance. An ordinance of the city of Kingsburg amending chapter 16.09 of the title six of the Kingsburg Municipal Code regarding 
the growth management system. You trying to memorize? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why I'm reading. <laughs> There's a lot there. So, can I get a motion? I'll make that motion. <laughs> I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries. Thank you. Thanks for reading that. That's yeah, yeah, that's right. For sure. I, 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 I clarified that with Abby. I had to read it all. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Abby. 6.3 Laurel Street Park, Laurel Street Dog Park update. Staff report by Community Service Director Adam Castaneda. Presentation by Adam Castaneda. All right, well, good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of Council. Um, so tonight, I just want to bring to you an update on the progress of the Kingsburg Dog Park renovation project um, that was funded by Proposition uh, 68 uh, back in 2021. Um, the city of Kingsburg was awarded $1.244 million uh, during a round four of that application process to renovate the existing dog park um, on the 1200 block of Laurel Street behind the old vet or the current, current Kingsburg dog park. Um, the primary objective of the project is to enhance the park's recreational amenities, um, which would include restrooms, walking track, landscaping, shade structures, um, and, and exterior lighting. Um, in April of this past year, Council authorized the City Manager to execute the Kingsburg Dog Park Task Order with Peters Engineering um, to complete the design phase of the project. Um, and since then, several critical uh, initial tasks have been completed, um, which include um, uh, site surveying, uh, geotechnical investigations, and environmental assessments, um, just of the ground and soil um, and the project site in general. Um, on the staff report, we did include the current timeline of the project, um, which uh, we believe or staff feels that is on track. Uh, right now we are in the design phase of the project, um, and the, the project is currently under review with the Kingsburg Community Services Commission and city staff, um, along with the engineering um, uh, group. Uh, to ensure transparency for the project in total, we do uh, feel like we want, we want to bring this project back um, or the final design phase back to council and the commission back in November um, so that you can see a final design of, of, of what the project's going to be before it goes out to bid. Um, if everything goes to plan, we're hoping that the bid process will open in January of 2024 um, with construction to start hopefully in February or March of 2024. Um, the project does have a grant performance period that ends in 2028, um, but we feel that the project will be completed way before that timeline. But we do have up until that time to, to uh, utilize the grant. The grant. Um, and so with that, that kind of concludes my update. Um, we definitely want to keep the community involved in the process. Um, and so um, we will be sending out additional um, just uh, inquiries for feedback from the community. Um, in the in your packet, there was a, a rendering of the current design uh, landscape of the park. Um, and Dave Peters is here tonight to answer any specific questions that you might have um, regarding this part. But um, with that, that ends my report. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Questions from council? I have a couple quick questions. Adam, is this is this the final design or this is the initial design? So this this is a revised it, it's design. It's like yeah, it's like maybe vision two. Or okay. Of, you know, how, I mean, not sure. So so it's not the one that's been no, submitted for the grant process. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. So, so there are so there's still time to amend or do whatever. Okay. Yeah. There are certain requirements that the grant has to fulfill through the state, um, and those are the amenities that I kind of listed off at the beginning. The restroom, the walking track, um, updated landscaping, shade structures, and lighting. Those are all state requirements. So the Community Services Commission and staff wants to make sure that those are overall included in the project, um, and then everything else design-wise is kind of up in the air. So that's, that's where the design phase comes through. So... Um, we're hoping that the completion of the design phase, we can get a final um, yes from the commission and from staff to say this is what we'd like to submit um, as the actual project by November um, so that we can bring it back to council to get your approval um, so that we can open the bid process in January. So with the, the amount of trees, which is great because it's gonna provide a lot of shade, right, for the dogs and the people around the walking, which is great. Um, are those like native species plants? Because isn't there a push in the state to be like more like native species and drought tolerant plants? Yeah, we have, we have a, a, a tree list that we always work off of that, yeah, they're native to the area, they're drought resistant type tree. 
these non-invasive type roots and they're really shallow. Right, so not shallow rooted, so they're going to tear up the, you know, the walking path and all the rest of that. Okay, fair enough. That's all I have. We have, we have a landscape architect that's involved as well. So. Okay. I'm assuming the middle is nothing, right? I mean, the middle's dirt. The yeah, it's, so it's a the white portion. Yeah, so it'll it'll maintain its function as a ponding basin. Okay. Uh, we have a contract with uh, or an agreement with the state of California. We have to provide certain drainage along the line there, so it it'll it'll maintain its current function. And then, okay, I guess I did have more. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but, but there's a drainage pipe that runs into that, right? Right in the middle more of than it. One. Yeah. Okay. So those will be like safety orient I mean they'll have safety around so dogs or people can't well, go all, in they're all underground and then they then they come up from the bottom of the I think one of them comes up through the side a couple of them come up through the bottom of the basin so yeah they won't they won't they won't uh, there won't be a safety issue with them. okay yeah, I'm just worried about somebody's little dog pet going <laughs> all the way up the pipe. Like, oh, our little dog. <laughs> okay. We worry about kids getting in there. And yeah. Them. Sure. Yeah. Okay. When is the next opportunity that the public would have for input in this? I know we get lots of dog park questions. Yep. Yep. So the Community Services Commission meets every fourth Wednesday of the month. Um, they, they went dark in July, so we, they didn't do that anything there. But the next one would be August 23rd, uh, which would be the fourth Wednesday, 530 at the council chambers. Um, and again, it's just open to the public. I think now that there is a rendering uh, for the public to kind of look at and kind of help um, facilitate their ideas, they'll, they'll definitely be more vocal about um, what they'd like to see, So, which is, which is great. Yeah. Just like get as many people involved as we can. Yep. All right, thank you. On that note, any public comment on this item? Nope. I just include that Adam is available to take comments any day. So yeah. If My phone any, number is. <laughs> uh, yeah. if, any, if, they, if they can't make that meeting, I have a, his email is readily available. I have a question for Dave. Dave. Will the restrooms there at the dog park be similar to the ones at Athwell? Probably so, yeah. Well, that's what we're looking at right now is prefab. Prefab, okay, yeah. Okay, that item is informational only, so we'll move on to council reports and staff communications. 7.1 Community Service Commission doesn't to report. Here's our oh. Thanks for your guys' time. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> Have a good night, Dave. Um, 7.2 Public Safety Committee, we met last Monday, and we just had a discussion on the funds that we received in early July, and we're just going to continue our discussion on those. We do those funds. You know, we just received them, so we've got a, quite a while to uh, have discussion on that. 7.3 Chamber of Commerce. Laura's not here, but I know I uh, they haven't met since the last meeting. So 7.4 Economic Development. Um, a couple things to report on. Um, there's the Economic Development Committee didn't meet, but um, we do have several things going in the community that um, bears mentioning and. So there's two different items in plan check that are, um, you know, progressing. So one would be the Sinclair new design for the Sinclair gas station. The other would be the 76 gas station that would be going in by the dollar store. So I thought those were, you know, progressing and bared, you know, mentioning. So other than that, nothing else to report. Thank you. 7.5 Finance Committee. We meet, I believe, on the 14th. Yes, August 14th. Okay. 7.6 Planning Commission, nothing to report. 7.7 seven, seven, South Kings GSA. Nothing to report. 7.8 Downtown Business Improvement District. Okay. I 
equidad. 7.9, Council of Governments. We met last Thursday, but uh, nothing, nothing to bring back. 7.10, Council Member Reports. I have one. Um, I did attend the Tri-County Health uh, Care District meeting, which they changed their name, by the way. I don't know if everybody knew that, but it's now the Kingsburg Health Care District. So they, they dropped the Tri-County portion of it. So um, in addition to that, as I reported earlier um, during the grant process, so the fire grant was um, the city's fire grant for uh, the fire station was approved verbally. So was the police um, grant was that Adam put together was also um, approved verbally. And then the last one was the um, play, the playground um, grant. And that one they are supporting at a level of 50% verbally. They also made some changes to the agreements. Uh, in the past, it had been lump sum payments for the grants. Um, now they went to, they had to change um, the contracts to read more of an invoice reimbursement scenario. So if we submit invoices or grant recipients that are awarded money, they would submit invoices and pay off the invoices or the grant recipient could pay for the project and get reimbursed for it. So um, that was a change. And so the contracts were written, but then they went back to the attorney to get readjusted on that portion. So. I thought that was worth mentioning because they are, you know, two significant changes in, in how they're doing business over there. So that's all I had to report. Any questions? Thank you, Dave. Anybody else? Uh, all I have is uh, I do have something. Dave and I a couple of weeks ago went to the South San Joaquin Valley Division Valley Division uh, dinner in Visalia. Uh, Talked to a lot of you know people from different towns, Hanford, Visalia. Uh, Visalia hosted, of course, uh, and they had two speakers that night. They had a guy from down south, and they had the sheriff department. No, CHP. Excuse me, the CHP department there, and it was on elected officials being safe. You know, uh, so. This guy, from, he was from, I think, Long Beach or somewhere, Dave? Right, or he's from the Orange County. Orange County, anyways, yeah. So they, they, they give a good presentation on just be aware of your surroundings, you know, all the time. And when you're out speaking or in, in council meetings, I guess he was, you know, talked about some council. He said some cities have where they have a metal detector when you walk in their council meeting. <laughs> so we're like, well, we're not, like, we're not there in Kingsburg. But. Well, it was interesting because it opened the door for council members. Have you had any type of issues? And some people have had physical altercations yes. around town or, you know, so it was it was interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and the CHP also had a good speaker. Just same thing, be aware of your surroundings at all times, you know, in council meetings when you're out speaking. or uh, So just a good reminder for elected officials and to be aware of your surroundings at all times and just be safe. So. And the the dinner was at the Marriott, and the dinner was very good. <laughs> so, anyway, that's all I have. Uh, Seven Eleven City Manager's Report. Just one brief item uh, as we go through our uh, our update for our uh, strategic planning. Uh, a reminder that there are two uh, public uh, community meetings that are next Thursday. So there are two options uh, from 1.30 to 3 p.m. and then another meeting from 7 to 8.30 p.m. and those will be held at the, at the historic train depot. And so anyone uh, from the community can attend. We've been uh, promoting it uh, in the carrier and we'll continue to do so on social media this week as well. But, so that's next next Thursday the 10th. Uh, that, and that will be led by uh, the facilitator uh, that the city's hired. That's all I have. Okay, thank you, Alex. Next, we have future agenda items. We have none. Right, okay. Adjourn regular city council meeting. So we'll adjourn the meeting tonight. Thank you all for coming. That was quick. Good meeting.
Yeah, the quickest ever. That was very quick.